Hey, you got a phone name. Uh, morning, everyone. It's 11 o'clock. I have my tea ready. I'm going to just put it over here. How are you today? Um, we have a different setup today. I am not sitting on the floor with my dogs on the sofa. Um, I'm back in the kitchen um, in our photo gallery room. And uh, today is meant to be, good morning everyone, today is meant to be bank holiday. Uh, but it isn't a bank holiday, it's, uh, or, although it's the first Monday in May, we're not having a bank holiday today. Although my husband didn't realise that uh, because his diary, he writes everything for his meetings in his diary. And obviously the diary was printed before uh, the UK changed all their um, uh, holiday dates. So he, he's just got a full, full, I shouldn't laugh, I'm sorry. It's really mean of me. He's got a full day of work today because uh, a lot of the people he deals with are not are not UK based. So um, unfortunately he's working today. But I thought I'd take today and do something completely different. So I have my Union Jack flag up. There is a great story uh, to this. Um, when I lived in Northumberland in Morpeth, um, one of the chaps I used to work with is a guy called the Flagman. So if you ever need flags, the Flagman in Morpeth is, is the best guy ever. Um, he does do bunting as well, but not as good as us. Although I do like Simon, it's fine. Uh, but the flags, he makes the flags, and this flag, it's so ratty, see the bottom? I love it. It's so ratty and nasty, look at this. So this flag used to hang on the border between Scotland and England. So if you know the A1 going up the northeast coast, you hit that Scottish border, big sign, welcome to Scotland, and you've got the flags. This used to be there, and he um, he gave it to me on the day. It just happened to be the day that uh, Scotland voted for independence, so um, it was sort of an iconic day. Um, I'm relieved that Scotland didn't leave because I love Scotland and I still want it to be part of us. But this is, this flag was up there, and actually when I got it, it was oh I could hardly touch it because the amount of fumes, petrol fumes and pollution that had been absorbed by the fabric was just disgusting. And he was going to throw it out, so I washed it about ten times, and now it's great. And it's just uh, every now and then I hoist it out. Um, but today, because this week uh, we are leading up to VE Day on Friday. Now, I've spoken to a couple of people and uh, some people feel that we shouldn't have a massive party under the circumstances. Um, but I personally believe that it is a day that we uh, should not forget. Liberation of Europe was uh, an incredible thing. Um, and it wasn't just British, it was a lot, all our allies helped liberate Europe and, and just get rid of all the pain and suffering and the closing of the death camps. I mean, it, it is something to be remembered and celebrated because of how wonderful it was to uh, liberate everybody. I'm not saying it has to be a celebration like, you know, disco lights and uh, cocktails and lots of screaming and whooping around, but certainly it is a day that we should never, never forget. So today, um, uh, if you saw my post on Instagram, I was quite sad that we spent ages designing something ready for this day and actually we haven't actually come uh, done, printed it and made it because of lockdown. Um, we didn't see ourselves as an essential business. Um, so that was the decision that we took to lockdown. So we don't really have much bunting. We have a couple of the mini buntings that we're still working on. Um, but we don't have any of the big bunting. So I thought you could make your own bunting today. So I've got my glue gun. It's stinking because um, I've already, actually you can see it's smoking, it's smoking. <laughs> um, I've got it on, heated up already. Every, every household should have a glue gun. I hate them, but I love them. Um, you need obviously some paper, ruler and pencil. Um, and lots of colouring. Now, I don't have many colouring pens anymore. Uh, when the kids were little, I had millions and I, I, I kept throwing them out because they were just all over the floor all the time. Uh, but now the kids are older, they have uh, more grown up pens and they're all in their rooms. So I've had to ransack the rooms and we've got highlighters and all sorts. So we can have lots of colours, uh, pencils or pens, whatever you want. And then uh, the, the tie along the top you can do that in anything. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. You you know you can get these um, 
lovely coloured. They're, they're originally it was baker's twine and also you, you see it in the butchers, you know, when they tie up the joints of meat. But you can now get in these baker's twine lots of different colours and they're quite sweet. Or the more traditional, um, you've got this which is, um, uh, I guess you would describe that, I, I'm not sure exactly how you would all describe that, but for me it's like something you would uh, use on your apron, apron strings. Um, and then this is what we tend to use for our clients. Um, so it's bias binding in cotton. So you can use any of those, but actually, you know what? What's the easiest thing to do if you haven't got much time and doesn't cost very much money? Ransack the garden and just use something like garden twine. Um, if you're really posh, you can get these in lots of different colors, but I haven't. Um, I've just got it in brown. I quite like just the, the brown. Okay, so there's probably, oh, of course, pair of scissors. Uh, you always need a pair of scissors. Uh, so that's basically all you need to make bunting. So uh, if anyone says for Friday, I've got no bunting, sort yourself out. All of these things you'll be able to find in your house somewhere. And if you haven't got exactly this the right thing, just make something up. Use cotton or a cotton thread or, or something or an old tie, as in tie around your neck, anything that's long that you can attach something to. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. This is something fun that you can do with the kids and the family. And uh, morning, Justine. So I expect you to be making bunting and you can show me a picture later, okay? <laughs> um, so that's basically your, what you need for the top bit. For the bunting itself, honestly, there are no rules at all here. So don't stress yourself out and think you have to make a triangle in a certain shape. Uh, sorry. <laughs> can I just delete that and start again okay so don't stress yourself out you don't have to make a triangle in any particular size the shape is important it has to have three sides but the side uh, the size uh, the size is not important right you can do whatever size triangle you want so long as it's got three sides yes I said it okay cool so one of the easiest things to do is either take a, um, I've got an A4 pad here. I didn't know I had this pad of paper. It's got the start of a, a letter here. Goodness knows what I had it for. But let's just use that. You can either, let's just take one. Not complicate it. Um, so you can either have a, tri uh, a triangle that's going to be that big. Or you can cut the paper in half and have triangles that big. I mean, it's entirely up to you. Should we go? Let's go for big. So to, uh, let's say we're going to go for an A4 piece of paper. In order to make a triangle, dead simple. Don't make your life complicated. Uh, draw, fold it in half. At the top, oh, let's go in a blue pen because I do, I do like this colour actually. I really like this colour. And this is one of my uh, logo colours. So. Um, so where you fold it in the middle, just put a mark there, see? I don't know if you, oh, you can't see that. That's not very good drawing, is it? So um, what I've done at the bottom, where you folded it, you just put a mark here. Okay, so that's your marking point. So just take the same pen and a ruler and just go from the top left and the top right going down to the mark that you've got here and that's how you get your perfect triangle. Um, let's just do that very quickly. You can see how quick this is. I'll try not to draw on the table. Um, okay, job done. There we go. You have your uh, perfect three-sided triangle. Now, if this is too big for you or too wide for you, doesn't matter. And uh, what you can do is fold it back again, because I do like to do things uh, quickly. Fold it back again on itself, so you've got the pen marking like so, and just cut along the line. So you only actually have to cut once, great. Why do it twice when you can only do it, do it once? There you go. Now how quick was that? That was, you know, less than a minute or something. There you have your bunting triangle. Now if you think, oh that's really too long, you can change the size by changing the length and cutting it differently if you want to. Uh, but for this exercise, I'm just going to do the same. Now, if you are going to do paper, um, 
I would just carry on doing lots of A4 pieces of paper like that and then have them all laid out on the table and then um, you can put them together. If you're working with young children uh, who aren't um, the best at colouring in within the lines, then maybe it's better to get them to colour in uh, before you cut it out. So it depends on the kids you're working with. If you're working on kids who like to be really independent, do their own thing, let them just decide for themselves. So either cut it all out and then colour it in, or colour it all in on the piece of paper and then cut it out. Actually, that probably would be nicer because you get a nice finish, but whichever way you want to do. So let's just say you want to have a nice, um, what are we going to do? Let's just do a smiley face. So a very happy person on this one. God, he looks a bit angry there, doesn't he? Well, he's meant to be very happy, okay. Don't judge me on my cartoon drawings. <laughs> so let's pretend you've you've spent hours and hours decorating a bunting flag. Unlike me that spent one second on it. You then have lots and lots of flags together. Let's just do one very quickly. Um, actually, I was going to say, if you wanted to do it with fabric or um, you didn't want to keep drawing out your shapes, what you could do is, um, there are other cereal packets available, but we, we our family love um, crunchy nuts. Get a, get a cereal pack box. Cereal box. That's simple. Cut it out. Cut. Actually, I'm just going to cut instead of ripping because it'll be, I think, quicker. I say that and actually no, it isn't. So what we're going to do is just cut. Way There. Piece of card. Dead simple. Steal it from your mum's uh, cereal box cupboard. She won't mind. Honestly, she won't mind. And then draw your triangle and make it on here and then you've got a template. So I'm going to just quickly, ordinarily, I would uh, measure this out to make it perfect as I did for the uh, A4 piece of paper. But just for this purpose, I'm just going to do it really quickly. So I'm just going to um, copy our template. And that was my ruler. Draw it out like so. Okay, we actually do this all the time, you know, um, I think anything, I'm very much into uh, reusing things around the house, um, recycle things, reuse them, we don't necessarily have to buy new all the time, we can reuse what we've got in the house and give it a new life and enjoy it. Stop. Stop it being so wasteful. Okay, so how quick was that? You made your um, crunchy nut cornflakes template. So this is your template. So if you didn't want to work with paper, you could actually work with um, thicker card or if you're onto fabric, doesn't make any difference. But actually either cutting out a template like this with card or just doing it directly onto paper. Whichever works for you, it doesn't really matter. Um, so once you, uh, so there are your triangles. So let's just do uh, one more and then I shall use my template, which I have just made. Uh, okay. I really like these pens. These are my daughter's pens. I might steal them. Borrow. Borrow. Um, borrow them. They're really nice, actually. Okay, so let's just get one more, and I'm just going to quickly fold that in half and cut. Like so. That's not even straight, you see. I'm not doing... I'm not... Perfect. Try not to do it too quickly. Actually, you know what? Um, I'm going to cut this a little bit smaller just to show you something, because what could be quite fun... I don't know if you can see on the line. So this was the original line. 
and I've now made the line a little bit um, closer to the end here. So let's just make a smaller triangle. Let's just be radical. Okay, so here we go. Ta da! We'll have a smaller one. It looks a little bit fat, but it doesn't really matter. So you've got a smaller one and a big one. So actually, if you want to make up bunting that's different, uh, I nearly said it again, I nearly said shapes, different sizes. You can, uh, that's not a problem at all. Lots of different sizes uh, is easy and can be fun. Doesn't matter, it's your bunting. You can do whatever you want. There are no rules. Uh, so you can do it like that. I quite like different sizes. Shows a bit different. Oh, I should turn. Yeah, you've got a picture. Okay, so that's an idea. Different sizes, do that. Right, so let's put everything aside. So let's pretend that we have spent hours creating the most beautiful drawing. Picture, colouring. You know what you could do? You could cut out, um, print off photographs of your family, uh, the people who aren't with you, your grandparents. Um, you could print out pictures of people who were, these, a lot of these people on this wall uh, were, lived through the war. Some died during the war and some survived but have since died. And, you know, you could put pictures of them to remember them. Um, you could write words on them. Um, you know, whatever messages of love and friendship and happiness you want to do, write on the bunting. You can write on front and back. So if you put them in the window in the front of the house, people can see it as they walk past and you can see it from your side, whichever. Um, if you are going to colour both sides, you might, even, and if you're using paper, you might want to consider um, putting two triangles together and gluing them so they're thicker, so um, it, it won't show, because that's showing through a little bit, isn't it? I don't know if you can see. The light's not terribly good. But I, when I when I hold that up to the light, I can actually see see the design through. So it, it, just just think about that um, just logically. If you think that your design is going to show through the other side, then just do it double. Um, okay, so you've got all, let's pretend you've got all your flags laid out. They're all coloured. Everyone's happy. The best bit then for me, I always find, is the order. And you might think, what's she going on about? I know I have a really odd life and I enjoy things like this, but actually if you have about seven, eight, nine flags and they're all just a bit different, working out the order and how it looks as it hangs up is really, really important. Well, it is to me, um, but maybe I'm a bit special like that. Um, but let's say you've got all the kids, they've, they've done uh, two or three flags each. Get them, sit down on the table and work out uh, all together as a family which order and that will take you an hour. <laughs> once once you've decided on the order, all you need to do is measure the top, measure the top of your triangle here on each one because you might have different sizes but this one is you don't have to be precise, okay? This is approximately 21 centimetres wide. So, because maths was always my weakest thing, I'm going to write this down, and I'm not ashamed to say it. We have 21 centimetres. That has no lead, which is rubbish. Uh, let's just get blue. I do like blue. Blue pen. Um, so that one was 21 centimetres. So let's just pretend. I, in fact, I'm making up uh, a length of bunting for a lady called Kate who lives not that far from me. And it's just um, just a little one-off thing that she really needs for Friday because she's doing a live tea party. I think she's doing it on Facebook. So I said I'd make something up. So we're, we're making for her seven flags. So it's not going to take very long. Um, so 21 centimetres wide. Let's say we've got seven so times seven, that is seven, that is uh, uh, 147 centimetres long, okay? So then you need to decide how, uh, how close your triangles are going to go. Are they going to go a long way away or close? Hmm. Sometimes it's nice. When it, well, I, I normally recommend it if you're doing uh, just a few flags, not so many. I recommend that you put them fairly close together. I don't think bunting should ever be uh, touching. 
Mm, I think it looks much nicer with a gap. Again, it's entirely up to you, but just on experience. Um, so I'm going to give a three centimeter gap between each flag. Now, because there's seven flags, they're going to be six gaps. So six times three is 18. And I'm going to add that to my 147, uh, which is 14, 15, 4, 5, 6, 1, 6, 165 centimeters. I did that quite quickly. Well done, Emma. Um, 165 centimetres. And then you need to measure, um, think about the gap that, or the window or where you want to hang it. So how, measure that. And the easiest way to measure that, actually, you know, the easiest way to measure that is probably get something like garden twine and just hang it from one end and, and make sure you've got a bit of a droop. Um, but I normally add on Let's just say for argument's sake, we're going to add on an extra 20 centimetres on each side because that's an easy number to add up. So that's another 40 centimetres. So that is just over two metres. OK, so once you've done your maths. So this is great for the kids because not only are you doing art, but you're also doing maths. So here, that's my, my drawing of my calculations. Old school. So... I know I've got seven flags, I've decorated them beautifully, I've got three centimetres gaps between them and I'm going to cut out a length of my garden twine. It's dead cheap actually this stuff. Honestly we've got stacks of it at home, I use it all the time. I'm just going to cut a little bit because I'm not actually making seven flags. Um, this is just, I feel like Blue Peter. Actually, so. I never use a glue gun for making my bunting. I'd just like to say that directly so everyone knows that our bunting is hand cut, designed and machine stitched. Just saying. However, for this tutorial, for, this, for people to actually make this at home, um, if you haven't got a glue gun, get some PVA and uh, spreader and, and my kids, when they were little, they all they, I always had PVA glue in the house. And if you haven't got that Pritt stick, and if you haven't got Pritt stick, you can use sellotape or worst case, staples. But I wouldn't encourage staples, but sellotape. So if you haven't got one of those things in the house, um, you could fold the paper and use pegs. And if you haven't got pegs, I can't help you, I'm sorry. Right, okay, where we go. So we'll put... Um, we should actually have covered the table with some um, protective surface. I haven't, so I'm going to hope I don't get it all over my nice kitchen table. So literally, I'm going to take the top of my triangle, I'm going to fold it over. About, I don't know, let's just say about a centimetre. Don't need to measure that too much, but see, I've just done that. And these end bits, you see they're sticking out here. I'm just going to trim them off. Okay. Easiest way to do it, just trim them off. I think if you get a, if you get a template that's you know straight and and it's just too fluffy, honestly, just make your life really simple. Just fold it over, trim the edges, job done. Lay the front with my beautiful cartoon design front down on the table. Take your thread. I'm going to leave that about. I'm not going to. Okay. I said I was going to leave 20 centimetres at the end, but for this tutorial, I'm not going to do that because I haven't cut enough. Um, but I'm just let's just pretend that's 20 centimetres. So we put that inside the fold. I'm just going to show you and then I'm going to glue it. Get the light right. So you see it's inside. And what we're going to do is actually glue that together. So I'm going to get my glue gun and try not to burn myself. Here we go. It actually stinks. I'm not that, I'm not a great fan of them because they just stink. I'm running out of glue as well. So I'm just going to take my glue gun and I'm going to just run very quickly. Whoops, here we go. Down this seam. Give it to one side. And I'm going to quickly put my twist inside. So that is going to seal. So I've put my glue in the crease to seal in the twine and I'm going to put an extra layer of glue on the 
front of the flap, inside but on the top edge of the flap, to seal the paper on paper. So that's two lines of glue I've done. Just show you now. It's a little bit warm. I'm not quite burnt myself. Okay, cool. There we go, voila. It's as easy as that. So I'm gonna show you the back here, try and get the light ready for you. So the first line of hot gun, glue gun, was along the folded edge, and we glued the twine to the edge to make that nice and stiff. Because what you don't want is it all be floppy. And then put another line of glue gun along the front, inside, you can see it's a little bit bumpity, and then you just press that down. So that's actually quite stiff now. So by doing, by doing the two rows of glue, it's just making it stronger and stronger. So we'll do it again. So we'll take our second one. This is the smaller, the smaller one. So I'm gonna fold over again. Just fold over the top one centimeter ish, give or take whatever, millimetres. Trim off the edges like so. Put the scissors, put those to one side, rubbish to one side. And we are going to glue, um, get the shade right inside that this edge here, and then on the lip. So we're doing the inside for the twine and the outside for the lip. Here we go. So. <laughs> my cable's not very long. Okay, my cable's not very long. So on, on the crease, here we go, job done. And what you can do to measure, just measure three centimeters from that point, three centimeters is approximately that. Okay, so we start at that point and push in quickly while the glue is still hot. So press, press quite hard with your fingers. And then glue gun out again and just go along the lip once. Here we go. Stinks. I don't really like hot glue gun smell. Oops, I probably I put a little bit too much so it's come out the um, end here. Oh, oh, now it's all over my fingers. That's why I don't like glue guns. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to show you that. So you can see the edges are uh, glued down. And because you've got that double layer of glue, it's really stiff. So there you go. You have your Hello, beautiful, beautiful bunting. So you will just continue doing that for all your paper. And you can do the same technique even if you're doing fabric. Uh, if you do use fabric, you could always use pinking shears. And for those of you who don't know what pinking shears are, they're a really big pair of scissors. They are quite cumbersome to use, but they're probably about this big. And instead of having a straight edge, they have a zigzag edge. Um, and if you cut, along the edge with pinking shears you'll get that nice zigzag uh, finish. Uh, often fabric doesn't fray as much when it's cut with a zigzag um, but you can just do cut it straight I mean it'll be fine. Oops it's now glued to the table. Oops. Um, so there you go enjoy making your bunting. Um, use paper, use coloured card, use um, fabric um, I wouldn't use anything like tissue paper that's really thin and, and flimsy. It's got to have some sort of weight and you can put this outside, you can put it in your windows, uh, it doesn't really matter. If Obviously if it's raining outside it's going to get wet and if it's paper it's going to ruin. But you know what, at the end of the day I'll show you something that's on here. We washed something, oh where is that? We washed something last night, I forgot where I put it, and it was by accident, um, a paper booklet went in the sink and got completely soaking wet. And I just opened it out, and it's made of paper, and it's dried, it's a little bit stiff and a bit wrinkly, but it's dried and it's fine. So don't,
get so stressed out about everything getting wet just hang it up and it'll dry and it'll be fine so whatever you decide to do whether it's paper whether it's card whether it's fabric um, whether you use garden twine or anything a little bit prettier you know just have fun with it enjoy it put print out pictures of people's faces loved ones people who are no longer with us people who are family members who were in the war um, and you can also go to um, VE Day uh, organization um, actually I can't remember the website but if you just google VE Day I think it might just be vedate.org.uk. It's something along that lines. But have a look and they have a couple of printouts of their logo. Um, they've designed 75 within a Union Jack. And you could print that out. So you could have Union Jacks printed out if you wanted to. But you know what? When, when you make bunting for yourself, I think it's really fun to make it personalised. Um, and make it just unique, just for you. Um, write your names on, write the date keep it in a cupboard when you finish, get it out every year, you know, enjoy it and, and have fun with it. Um, so I hope today was a little bit different. I mean, I've been talking for half an hour, which is a bit longer than I normally talk. Um, but hopefully you um, have had fun watching that. And also you now know how to make your own bunting. If you have any questions at all, please just um, ask me um, at the bottom and I can, I can come back to you. But have a great rest of the day, uh, rest of Monday, and I shall see you tomorrow, Tuesday, for normal 11 o'clock chat and mayhem. All right, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. All right, ciao.